Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to r slash entitled people, where people think they can do whatever the heck they want because they're special. Guys, this episode will leave you shaking your heads, I promise. An insane Karen today attacks OP and tries to pepper spray police. Another one gets shut down by doctors. And the last story, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Guys, your head might actually fall off from shaking it too hard. I hope you enjoyed today's tales, and do remember to hit that subscribe button for future stories. Email link will be right here for story submissions, and we're gonna dive in, guys. We're gonna dive in. Okay, we had a staycation this weekend. We visited a local luxury resort, and we parked our car with a valet. Upon departure, we found that some items were missing. We reported to the valet, and after investigating with police, they found some teens were going through the parking lot removing items from cars that the valets left unlocked. Police reports were filed, and the people were located and they happened to be guests at the hotel with their family. We were asked to meet with the mother at 7pm to retrieve our items. Let me say that we are not rich, we work hard. We have three kids, and we work days, nights, and weekends to be okay and to get ahead. This weekend was some time for our family to enjoy themselves before we go back to weeks of non-stop work. Anyway, the mother arrives and she sends her son with security to apologize. I stated that I didn't want an apology, I just want my things. So upon reviewing the bag I was handed, it was incomplete, and what was there was damaged. It was sunglasses, Ray-Bans to be specific. A matching pair that I got my husband and I for Christmas. They were in great condition in their cases in the car and now they're broken. Both the mother and son then become aggressive, stating that's all he took, and now we got it back, so they're done. Now I'm thinking, um, no. Did I mention that we work effing hard for our money? Your kid stole from me. Upon hearing me mention that, the woman insults me, calls us bad people in front of my kids, and she tried to use the, you're a mother, you have to understand, card. Now yes, I am a mother, but I would sell my kid's stuff if he stole from you, or I'd make his 17-year-old ass work to pay it off. The woman kept stating that I was incorrectly stating the value, so I pulled out the receipt. Don't you love how they email those things now? In the end, we left, and we'll proceed with trying to go through court. The entitlement on the woman and her 17-year-old son was too much for me. I didn't accept the apology. You can't insult and berate someone, and then demand I accept your apology without a good faith effort to replace what was lost. As parents, we're responsible for our children's actions, and teaching them sorry doesn't cut it. So am I the a-hole here? Yeah, so everybody and their mom thinks that OP is not the a-hole in this situation. The woman's son is 17 years old, and he did something illegal, and he should be held accountable for his actions. Not this, you should understand, you're a mother, BS. Oh, and get this, OP said that the mom kept stating that money is not an issue, as she's a freaking lawyer. So it's not a situation where they just couldn't afford to make it right, she just felt like she didn't need to. Okay, so this was way back in college, at the local Walmart that's always known for being interesting. I have so many stories from this place. I swear, this Walmart is like a Karen beacon. So this story is a bit chaotic, and I tried to write it as clearly as I can, but a lot was happening at once. So some relevant info. I'm pale, and at the time, I walked with a cane. I have a condition where my heart rate can get too high, and my blood pressure can drop, and I can pass out. I also wear a headscarf on holidays and special occasions. Now there's many types and styles of headscarves, and on this day, I was wearing it in a style where it completely covered my head and then draped around my neck and was secured with pins. I use dressmaking pins. They're not very visible in the scarf, but they don't have anything covering their pointy ends. I make sure I place them so they'll hold the fabric in place and won't stick me. So since it's a holiday, I'm also wearing traditional clothing. A long skirt, a white shirt with some embroidery on it, and a fabric belt. So I'm going around the Walmart picking up a few things. My backpack is in front of the cart, so I don't have the extra weight on me. I'm standing at one of those aisle ends. I was trying to find something, and I had to look up where it was on my phone. Out of nowhere, my headscarf is ripped off my head, and someone behind me yells, Terrorist bitch. Now luckily the scarf only had the end around my neck, so it pulled on my neck but didn't full on choke me. Still, this definitely activated my fight and flight response. The woman Karen starts screaming as I turn around. Apparently one of the pins had stuck her when she ripped my scarf off. She's screaming that I'm a terrorist, that I assaulted her, and she wants the manager and the police called, etc, etc. 
There was a couple that had been down the aisle, and they saw it happen and run over. The woman kind of threw her sweatshirt on my head and got between me and the Karen. I was panicking at first, but then I realized that she was trying to help me cover my head. And the man with her had also gotten between us, and he was yelling at the Karen. The man then grabs my scarf back and handed it to his wife, who hands it to me. And then she took her sweatshirt and held it up around my head to sort of block people's view of my head while I tried to get my scarf back on. Meanwhile, the Karen's still screaming that she wants police to arrest me for being a terrorist and for assaulting her. And how dare he help me? The woman starts digging through her purse, screaming that she's grabbing pepper spray because she wants to spray me and the man. Now, I wanted to get out of there as fast as possible. A nearby employee had come out of an aisle to see what was happening and ran off to get the manager, I'm assuming. The man is yelling back at Karen, and Karen screaming that I'm a traitor to my own race, along with her earlier insults. She then demands that the man pin me to the floor so she can pepper spray me and do a citizen's arrest and keep me there until police and the FBI arrived since she's adamant that I'm a terrorist. So at this point, I'm shaking and crying and my heart rate is extremely high. I know I need to leave or I'm gonna pass out. The woman asked if I wanted to leave and I nodded. She then grabs my backpack and the arm that I'm holding my cane in and she quickly walks me down the aisle and out of the store. The woman asked where my car was, and I tried to explain that I'm a college student, and I have to wait for the bus. But I'm coughing and trying to breathe, and my heart rate is well over 180 at this point. The woman sees this, and she explains that she's a nurse, and clearly I'm not okay. She then asked my medical condition and what I need. The woman then offered me to sit in their van, which usually would obviously be a no, but we're standing in the middle of a parking lot, and I'm about to pass out. And currently, my brain is not getting very much oxygen. The woman opens the side door and I sit on the edge of the car and promptly faint. I wake up a few minutes later and she's holding my wrist in one hand checking my pulse and looking at her watch. I mumble something so she knows I'm awake and she just keeps telling me that it's gonna be okay, that I'm doing fine. After I recover a bit, I sit up and realize that the man is standing outside the car. I ask for the Gatorade from my backpack and sip on that while he explains what was going down. He says the manager showed up with store security and he explained what happened and the police had been called. I look over and sure enough, there's cop cars pulled to the front of the store. The man asked if I'd been hurt, if I wanted to talk to police, and honestly, I'm just scared of cops and I just want to go home. So I declined to talk to police or press charges. The man then went back inside to talk to police a bit more, and I tried to fix my scarf a bit better. I had lost a few pins through this, which was kind of annoying, so I couldn't wrap it how it was earlier. The woman told me my heart rate had been around 200 when I passed out, and luckily it had come down again quickly because she considered calling an ambulance. She then lets me know that the man is texting her, and she reads out to me what's going down back in the store. So as it turns out, I didn't need to press charges. Karen was so infuriated that a man would help a terrorist bitch to get away that she got a bit aggressive. She was yelling at the manager, security, and the officers when the man came back in. Apparently when she saw him, she rips out her pepper spray and she's screaming at him. The cops grab her arm to stop her and she tries to pepper spray the cops. She then gets taken down and cuffed. The woman is positively gleeful as she tells me about Karen getting tackled. Apparently then, Karen starts screaming about suing the cops, getting the FBI involved, all the classic Karen stuff. Now I didn't get to see Karen get taken off to jail sadly, as my bus pulled up and the woman helped me get into it. Since then, I refuse to go by myself to any store if I am wearing a headscarf, even though I live in a different area now. Guys, what a horrific situation to be in for OP. And I'm glad the psycho woman was arrested, and I'm even more glad that two people in their right mind stepped in to defend OP. Like, how insane is it that this woman was like, yep, I'm just gonna attack this random person in Walmart. I feel like going to jail today. And the crazy thing is, she had it in her head that she was doing right. Like, she fully believed that she should pepper spray and pin OP down and hold her until the cops arrive. Like, what in the freaking world? So I'm a registered nurse. A few years ago, I was working at a walk-in clinic in the middle of downtown in a large Canadian city. Now as a walk-in clinic nurse, I'm used to a lot of entitlement from patients. Those who believe that they can jump the line in front of other people who have been waiting 5 hours to see the doctors, simply because their symptoms are more important. These people don't understand that when we say we've closed registration early in order to be able to close at our official time of 9.30, it means they can't be seen, even if it's only 8pm when they come in. They usually become verbally and physically abusive towards me if they don't get their way. 
Now, a lot of doctors that worked with me seem to be pushovers. So if I told the patients that they couldn't be seen due to clinic policy of wanting its employees to actually get sleep before having to come back the next morning, they would attempt to go around me and appeal to the doctor, who would inevitably cave. This angered me on so many levels. Firstly, these doctors were simply rewarding this disgustingly selfish behavior. Secondly, they were lending credence to the belief that a lot of patients had. That I was a mere subordinate to the doctor and not my own autonomous practitioner. Thirdly, I was a nurse manager of the clinic. The doctors were on call at the behest of the clinic, and as such, did not technically have authority upon our hours as nursing staff and receptionist. Fourthly, we're supposed to act as a united team. So one particularly trying night, a Karen comes in with her toddler child. She comes in around 8.45, and we still had another two hours of people waiting to be seen. We closed registrations at 6pm, and we weren't accepting any new patients. I'm in the back of the clinic performing a wound cleaning, when the receptionist calls me and asks me to come up front, as there's an aggressive patient demanding their child be seen. So I head out front. The lady's standing at the desk, her arms are folded, and she's snapping at her child to sit still. I glanced at the child, who's sitting on a chair, swinging their legs, and babbling away happily to anyone who will listen. Her eyes are bright, she's smiling, laughing, and she doesn't look unwell. Now as soon as the lady sees me with my stethoscope, she launches her tirade saying, Doctor, my child is extremely unwell. She has asthma and she can barely breathe. She needs to be seen immediately. I can't wait. Now I glance deadpan at the child who's singing loudly to herself and I look back to the lady and say, she doesn't seem to be in distress ma'am. Now hearing this, the Karen tenses up and stares at me as though I'm a complete effing moron. And she says, well where the hell did you go to medical school? Kids present very differently than adults when they can't breathe. What are you? Twelve? I then walk to the child, place my hand gently on her back. I count her respirations as she falls quiet under my touch and I observe her scapulae as they expand and contract, indicating full chest expansion. I then listen to the smooth sounds of her inspiration and expiration, audible even without a stethoscope. I observe the moistness of her conjunctivae as she rubs her eyes, and I see the glistening wetness of her tongue as she licks her lips. She's well hydrated. I then say to the woman, I'm not a doctor, as I plug my stethoscope into my ears and begin to listen to the child's lungs. The Karen then yells at me saying, of course you don't know what you're doing. I didn't bring my child to see some stupid nurse. Now get away from us. I demand to see a doctor right now. She needs to go to the hospital and if she gets worse, I will have your license and I will sue. The child's lungs are perfect, so I lean down and smile at the kid and say, how are you feeling? She wants my stethoscope, so I hand it to her, and she says, I'm bored. I then look at the lady and say, registrations closed some time ago, because as you can see, we have many patients to see, and we'll end up being here past closing. I'm afraid we can't see your child today. Based on my physical assessment, I cannot triage her up the line, as she doesn't seem to be in respiratory distress. There are several hospitals close by that I can direct you to, if you wish. So after hearing what I say, a slow purple flush begins to crawl over her features. I smile blandly at her as I await the inevitable storm that's about to erupt. She then walks up to me, leans into my face, and says to me, Get. The. Effing. Doctor. I tell the Karen, My doctor's seeing patients, ma'am. I can't interrupt him. She says, My daughter will die because of you. You disgusting, low-educated piece of filth. Get. The. Effing. Doctor. Now I'm about to repeat my previous statement when I suddenly hear a slight cough behind me. It's the doctor. Now internally, I sag, thinking, great, he's gonna usher them in, and I get to look like an idiot in front of everybody again. He asked her what seems to be the problem. She then rushes over to him and clings to his arm and says, oh thank god, doctor, my child, she has asthma. Her puffer ran out and she's in an attack. And this, this nurse, this useless nurse refused to let her see you. The doctor stands there resolute and disentangles his arm from her vice grip. He takes a cursory glance at the child who's begun delightedly listening to her own stomach with my stethoscope. He then walks over to me. Now, this is a doctor whom I've not met before tonight, so I prepare for the worst. He says, Nurse, I assume you performed triage? I nod and say, Yes. I didn't see any evidence of respiratory distress. He then asks me, Lung sounds? Non-adventitious, I say which is a fancy way of saying clear as day. What about mucous membranes? I tell him pink, moist, capillary refill. 
which is a fancy way of saying blood flow, and I tell him, immediate. The doctor then turns towards the lady, and this is when I realize that he's been watching this entire exchange from the beginning. He then tells her, I'm calling you an ambulance. Now at this, the Karen blinks and says, What? Why? He then says to her, You said that she needed to go to the hospital, so if that's what you think, you know your child better than I do, and way better than my nurse does, so I'd rather be safe than sorry. The Karen looks shocked, and she says, But, 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 but the nurse says she isn't in distress. The doctor then smiles humorously and says, What? This nurse right here? The one you're accusing of negligence and being useless and how she lacks of knowledge? I trust this nurse's assessments. She's been very perceptive and professional for the long night I've had the fortune to work with her. However, she, like myself, can't know the intricacies of your child's history. It would be negligence indeed, if we were to dismiss your concerns as a parent. So nurse, please call the ambulance. Unable to keep the grin off my face, I walk to the phone. The lady's trying to argue with the doctor who's walking away, and he says, Best of luck to you, ma'am. I'm sorry you had to wait so long, but it's best we leave this to the professionals, hmm? And it's a shame too, as this is flu season, and all the emergency departments are full to bursting with people waiting to be seen. Prepare for a very long wait. And with that, he returned to the examination room. I hung up after exiting the call with EMS. The lady was visibly shaking. A few smiles littered the faces of those watching. I tell her, the ambulance should be here shortly. If your child's status worsens, please have my receptionist call me back out. Have a good night, ma'am. Vindication has never felt so sweet. Guys, I freaking love this story. An entitled woman who wanted to cut in front of dozens of people waiting to see a doctor ends up earning herself an even longer wait. With that said, however, there are some people who do have issues with what OP and the doctor did. And I get it. It is a sweet win for OP and the doctor, but a lot of people who work as paramedics are upset at what the doctor did. And I can understand. As an ambulance driver, I think I'd be pretty pissed if I responded to a call with a completely fine child only because a nurse and doctor wanted to get petty against the Karen. So today, I, a 29-year-old female, am 13 years in remission from cancer. I had a very aggressive type, with less than 20% chance of survival for the first 5 years. But that's not the story I'm here to share, that's just relevant information. When I was 16, I qualified for Make-A-Wish. I had played around with a bunch of potential ideas, destination vacations, meeting my favorite band, getting electronics, etc, etc. So once the idea of traveling somewhere warm came up, my mom, the entitled parent, was convinced that's what's happening with my final wish. The discussion of Barbados came up, so that's what she set her mind to. However, I was still on the fence, and after discussing it with my correspondent at Make-A-Wish, I wanted to meet my favorite band. Now, we wouldn't have been able to go to Caribbean for the trip, simply because of the cost, but we could have still gone somewhere warm and out of the country. There was talks of Florida, California, or even Hawaii as the destination to meet them at. I wrote a letter to said band explaining how listening to them helped me get through my treatment, and my correspondent mailed it to the managers, and they were going to begin preparations for the band to get time scheduled for the wish. When I told my mom what I wanted and the plan to meet the band, she went nuts. My mom went off about how she deserved the trip as much as I do because she was there for me the entire time. She told me if I wanted to do anything besides going to Barbados, that I could find another adult to supervise the trip, because neither her nor my stepdad would be joining me, since it wasn't what she wanted. She then told me to pack my bags and that I'd be staying at my dad's until I came to my senses and told Make-A-Wish that we were going to Barbados. I spent over a month at my dad's, and the correspondent tried to convince me to go through with what I wanted several times before I caved and let my mom have what she wanted. Now, my parents did make a compromise with me at the time. They told me that they'd drive me to the concert in Toronto if I'd paid for the entire trip. Foolish 17-year-old me thought that this was a great idea. I'd get to see the band in concert, and I'd make my parents happy in the end. Now, it costs a lot, and my parents complained the whole time, but at least I got to see them in concert. On the occasional time where the conversation of the trip to Barbados comes up, my mom likes to paint herself as the victim after all these years. Saying stuff like, Could you imagine if you'd gone through with it and we'd missed out on going to Barbados? You would have gone with Persons Mom instead of us, and left me and your stepdad behind, and I would have never forgiven you if you'd done that. To this day, I'm still a huge fan of that band. They were on hiatus for a while, but they came back and this whole situation really sticks in my mind. Especially when I see them performing on shows and on their two tours they've done post-hiatus. 
Yes, I saw them in concert, and it was a great time, but I could have physically met them and gone to a concert through Make-A-Wish while traveling to another country without having to pay out of pocket for the experience. All because my mom felt entitled to making my wish about her, rather than the actual recipient of it. Now, I understand that she didn't care to meet the band herself, but there could have been many opportunities available aside from just doing that. It shouldn't have been a question of doing whatever I wanted for my wish, especially with the extremely high chance of the cancer coming back. So many people have asked if I'm still in contact with her, and there's too many to answer individually. And yes, we do still have a relationship. There's been other things that her and my stepdad have done since this major one, but nothing amounted to what she did for that trip. Part of the reason I keep in contact is so my son can have a relationship with them, but I limit personal conversations with them. These stories are the saddest ones, guys. I've read numerous Make-A-Wish stories on this channel and how parents always try to make it about themselves, and it's absolutely sickening. Like, it literally makes me sick to my stomach how some parents can be so selfish in times like these. So for all who are wondering, OP says that they had the chance to meet the Jonas Brothers. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's wild, wild stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, a Karen gets stuck in an elevator. And you guessed it, someone's gonna get in trouble for it. So go check it out if you haven't, and myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.